Sandy Dambert is the type of person who will, in essence, launch a, a thousand ships in hopes that those, some of those ships would reach the shore. Uh, but with Sandy, uh, most of those ships reach the shore. As president of the American Bar Association, certainly as president of Florida State University, as the dean of our law school, he has done so much to enable folks to come together to support the human rights issues that are prevalent today in America. He's a fabulous motivator. I mean, you, I've gone, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a meeting with Sandy knowing full well I'm going to be asked to do something that I know full well I don't have any time to do it. And I'm leaving the meeting with a full basket of things to do and a deadline to do it on. And, and by the way, Sandy is not just a delegator. I mean, he is down there, you know, rowing with the rest of us. The medical school. It took us a couple of years to really, uh, you know, get that done in the Florida legislature. The medical school today is thriving, and I couldn't be prouder of it. Sandy, when he was president of the American Bar Association, had created the Central and East European Law Initiative, helping them to draft new constitutions, draft new laws. I said I would take uh, six or seven months away from my law practice, uh, but I never returned to the practice of law. It was such an extraordinary time, and working with Sandy and creating uh, this Sealy program is something quite, uh, quite remarkable for me. My suspicion is that when he became president in 1994, he had the idea of starting a Center for the Advancement of Human Rights. He had to put pieces into place. One of the key pieces was a very generous donor. Bob and Sandy are excellent friends, and Bob has anonymously given a lot of money to the center. We joke about that. He tries to keep it anonymous. Thanks to his initiatives, we were able to put together something really significant and really a bit unique. Part of the process at the beginning in trying to select a director was to also determine what the vision should be. Uh, Terry sort of came out of the blue. I had not known Terry before, but once people interviewed him, uh, they came away that here was a guy who who really ought to do this. When I arrived here in the fall of 2000, there was an empty building here on Jefferson Street and some great ideas and some tremendous vision. I'm constantly amazed at what Terry gets accomplished and how much difference he's made to this whole university in getting us oriented towards a program of human rights. The other hire that we made at the same time, which I would say worked out just as famously, um, was Professor Barney Twist. Who brought a, just a wonderful uh, academic orientation to the subject. I believe that I probably was the first academic appointment in a human rights center, formally speaking, from, with a background in the humanities, rather than political science or law. A Sandy and our original donor had this vision that our human rights center should actually incorporate all the different disciplines here at Florida State University. Once you got the interdisciplinary aspect of this right, it sort of, it sort of took off. We had a lot of enthusiasm from faculty from different disciplines. They created for us a host of courses so that, again, that was the beginning of what we now have, close to 40 or 50 courses that we offer on a pretty regular basis. Faculty with different expertise all get to work with the center, work with Terry and the other faculty who are affiliated with the center, and, and collaborate on courses, collaborate on projects. I started working with the Center for the Advancement of Human Rights by sending students there and by also allowing students to go overseas and do some projects overseas. It's hands-on, hands-on therapy, hands on making films to educate people about the issues. I'd have to say impact on students' lives, uh, whether they went on to do human rights work or not, it's been, been an immense impact. It's not just about, you know, Tallahassee. It's about what's going on all, all over the world and how can we support the good that's happening and how can we try and help people who need it the most. I was a student, now I'm the director of the Innocence Project of Florida, and, and there are lots of students just like me who um, will be the next leaders uh, to prevent um, human rights atrocities and tragedies and, and, and help vulnerable people wherever they need it. We did not want uh, something that was just so totally academic uh, that uh, it just did papers or held conferences. 
Uh, we really wanted to see a center that was engaged in uh, active human rights. Vanya has actually been literally the hands, uh, the open door of the FSU Human Rights Center, has done phenomenal victim-based work. We provide uh, resources, we uh, provide options, but it's really the client, the one that needs to make that call. It was a really great, great experience. And from the day we met, we're still friends now. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's really awesome to, to find those people. Whether it's a small telephone call or a big project, um, I see the results in the community. I, I see uh, the people that w we have touched. I never envisioned when the center got started that it would be a major uh, uh, it would have to play a major role in educating law enforcement officials uh, or in drafting legislation. There are some areas for my agency where we don't necessarily have a center with those resources and people available. We may not get that picture or that perception about what we're doing. So I think it just broadens my perspective on, on human rights in general. I think it's, it makes me a better person to be able to understand those things. We had people from all over the state come together who had started to work in the area of trafficking but never saw each other face to face. And there was a real kind of excitement and gratitude in the room for the center convening that group. We're really happy that they're here to you know, bring human rights attention to Tallahassee and to the legislature and the governor and everybody else here who's engaged now on these issues. Sandy has been phenomenal. He has continued to litigate cases for us, uh, taken cases up through appellate courts here in the United States on human rights issues. The court ruled that somebody who was undocumented couldn't practice law, but they also ruled that the legislature could change the law. My wife and I then did something we hate doing, going back to lobby the legislature. Uh, at the time the governor signed the bill, uh, Sandy was suing the governor about something else. So that's what kind of remarkable person. I mean, it's, it's a pleasure to be sued by Sandy Dallenberg. Jose was such a good client, and he was such a good advocate uh, for himself. So when people met Jose, they, they really wanted to help him out because he obviously was so committed and, and so conscientious. The first thing I'm going to do now is celebrate, of course. We're going to celebrate here tonight at the Swearing Inn, and then I'm just going to try to make people's lives better. I'm still delighted by the things that Sandy Dallenberg made possible um, for all of us when he was present. I must say that my, my gratitude to Sandy for having, well, and I should say to Bob Kerrigan as well, for having created a path that could lead to all of these wonderful experiences is very great. He's a, he's a legend. He cares about the right things uh, that make America strong. And I wish I could be more like him. Sandy, in so many ways, of course, has been the guiding vision of the Human Rights Center here at FSU. We think it's a vision that will travel well in the 21st century, and we would very much like to dedicate the center to Sandy in honoring the vision that he has actually given us.